Hello everybody. I am so happy that you chose to join us again today for our Bible study. Let us pray. Most holy and gracious Father, we come once again to say thank you. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for bringing us back here safely. Thank you, Father, for your word. We pray as always that you would open our hearts and minds to receive your fresh. In Jesus' name, amen. So we are, of course, on article number 12. The Harmony of the Law and the Gospel. And our author writes, We believe that the law of God is the eternal and unchangeable rule of his moral government, that it is holy, just, and good, and that the inability which the scripture ascribes to fallen men to fulfill its precepts arises entirely from their love of sin to deliver them from which and to restore them through a mediator to unfeigned obedience to the holy law is one great end of the gospel and of the means of grace connected with the establishment of the visible church. So we are going to continue with our verses from the seventh chapter of Romans and remember my desire is for you to read and even reread the whole chapter of Romans, the seventh chapter. Uh, what I will read are inserts, but the discussion over these weeks will encompass the whole chapter. And for your information, unless, other, unless otherwise stated, all scripture I'll use in this lesson will come from the NIV version. So, verse 7 of Romans, the 7th chapter, says, What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Certainly not. Indeed, I would not have known what sin was except through the law. For I would not have known what coveting really was if the law had not said, Do not covet. Verse 12, So then, the law is holy and the commandment is holy, righteous, and good. In verse 14, we know that the law is spiritual, but I am unspiritual, sold as a slave to sin. And verse 22, for in my inner being, I delight in God's law. So we uh, established last time that the purpose of the law is to show us sin. And that's his job. Paul says, I would not have known lust if the law had not said, do not covet. What an odd thing for Paul to say, that he would not have known it, uh, lust or that he would not, in essence, known what the law said or known sin unless the law pointed it out. In this 21st century, it seems that we are intimately aware of all kinds of sin. Sin is a part of the fiber of our universe. It, it's, it's so intertwined uh, in society that most of us are not shocked by it anymore. But notice again what Paul says. Indeed, I would not have known what sin was except through the law. He uses the personal pronoun, I. And before I is the word indeed. Some synonyms for indeed would be truly or actually or really and undeniably. He says, truly, without the law, I would not have known sin. Now think about that in the context of Paul's day. Paul tells us something about himself in his prior life, in Philippians, the third chapter, verses five and six, he says, 
he was circumcised on the eighth day of, of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law, a Pharisee, as for zeal, persecuting the church, as for legalistic righteousness, faultless. So even though we won't dig into what all of that means, from the surface, we get that Paul's credentials are impeccable. They are the things that if you were in that day and time, you would be pleased to have them on your resume. In short, he is saying, I came from the right family. I'm a member of the most prestigious organization, went to the right school, have a problem with people that don't see things as I do, and am an overall good upstanding person. And yet, he says, truly or indeed, without the law, I would not have known sin. How could that be? He was a Pharisee. That is what they did. Nobody knew the law better than a Pharisee. They were the law keepers. They were always pointing out the sin of others. They even pointed out what they saw as sin, even in Jesus. Jesus, the lawgiver, walked among them and they accused him of breaking the law which was impossible for him to do. Jesus said in Matthew, the fifth chapter, verse 17 and 18, Do not think that I am come to abolish the law or the prophets. I am not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. I tell you the truth, until, the, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen, will, be, will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. The law was given by Moses, but true grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. And part of that great part of that giving of grace and truth was to first fulfill the law. So my point is that the law had been there for generations and Paul knew it. He studied it. And as part of the Pharisee sect, he lived it, according to them. And yet, he says, I would not have known sin if the law had not made it known. What a strange thing to say, considering Paul's background. How is that even possible? The answer is maybe found in the personal pronoun, I. He says, indeed. Without the law, I would not have known sin. That tells me that it's possible to be and not be able to see. To be from the right family or even to be from the wrong family and, and pull yourself up by your own bootstraps, which one of those things that, I always, that always seems impossible to me. But it is possible to be a part of the achievers, to be a student of the Bible, even be one that quotes verses, and to be all things spiritual. In fact, to be faultless, and yet the truth never touch you. He said, indeed, without the law, I would not have known sin. That is personal. The law didn't change. It was there all the time. The law wasn't slack on what it was supposed to do. It was never taken off. It's never taken a day off, never taken a break, never put on pause, never, never so busy that it wasn't paying attention. So the law was always on the job always pointing out sin. If that is the case, how is it that for a long time Paul missed it? And we, if we are believers, at one time missed it also. And if you are not a believer, you're still missing it. 
Romans, the seventh chapter, verse 14 says, We know that the law is spiritual, but I am unspiritual, sold as a slave to sin. I think most of us, most often rather, we miss the fact that the law is spiritual. And think rather that we are spiritual and that we know more than we actually do. When we think of spiritual, we mostly think of the New Testament. And since the Old Testament uh, is just the law and it doesn't apply to us. But think about it and ask yourself the question, how was the law given to Moses? The 19th chapter, verses 18 and 19 says, Mount Sinai was covered with smoke because the Lord descended on it in fire. The smoke billowed up from it like smoke from a furnace. The whole mountain trembled violently and the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder. That display of power was the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit of God is the source of the law. That makes the law spiritual, even in the Old Testament. The law is spiritual because it describes the will of God. It expresses, it, it is the expression of the will and nature of God. It tells us just what God is like. The rules of the law reveal both the mind and the nature of God. It's like the more you hang around a person and get to know them, get to see how they live and, and see what's important to them, see what principles direct their decisions, all of that reveal their mind and nature. You come to know what to expect from them. It, it's kind of like people that know me, know that the social social media any kind is not my thing i might browse it i might even uh like a thing or two or send a congrats or a happy this or a happy that or but for the most part my presence is not felt and people that know me uh don't even look for me to be a part of the conversation if there's something that somebody thinks i should see they will call me or text me and say, hey, go look at this. Uh, so they know me like that. That is my nature as far as social media is concerned. The rules of the law let us know the mind of God. It reveals to us the nature of God, the holiness of God. When we really see what, what holy is, and it's not that stuff that we do trying to be holy, but the true holiness of God, God's holiness is unbending, it's unchanging, and there's no exceptions. That makes us really glad for God's amazing grace. Next, the law is spiritual because of its purpose. One of the many purposes of the law is to reveal the way of God, the way of holiness and righteousness and, and goodness. Then another purpose of the law is to reveal the deceit of sin. Sin takes the law and deceives us. How, you might ask? Well, sin takes on the form of self-righteousness and, and says, tells us to obey the law and you will live. It, it makes us feel safe and secure, making us think that we are obeying the law of God and that God is pleased with us. That was Paul's problem. As a Pharisee, with all his impressive credentials, he was being deceived by sin that had taken on the form of self-righteousness and was making him think he was doing it all right and thereby pleasing God. It, it gets us like that too. 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, verse 12 says, So if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. 
the reality is that nobody whose name is not Jesus, the Son of God, can keep the law perfectly and thereby please God. And even though we know that to be true, there is still something in us that that something is sin disguised as self-righteousness. And even though we know we can't obey the law, it makes us just keep trying harder. And we are forever deceived and doomed. And then sin, in that same deception, will flip things around. It, it, it will first deceive me into thinking that I can obey the law. And then after I'm unable to keep the law, sin deceives me again by causing me to beat up on myself and with discouragement. And the feeling of helplessness and hopelessness. Romans the 7th chapter. Verse 10 and 11. It says. I found that the very commandment. That was intended to bring life. Actually brought death. For sin. Seizing the opportunity. Afforded by the commandment. Deceived me. And through the commandment. Put me to death. So sin use the law to get in my head making me try and try and fail and, and then once i failed i tried harder and then i failed so i can't it, it's like a, a a circle each try and fail makes me aware of the fact that i cannot please god so i beat up on myself because i know that i will never please god and the circle just goes on and on. Me constantly trying and failing. Sin takes the law and uses it to put my failure on display. And then I become discouraged. Sin uses the law to whip up on me. Making me feel so unworthy. And drives me deeper and deeper into despair. To quote Marvin Gaye, he, he says, make me want to holler and just throw up both my hands. This ain't living. Oh no, this ain't living. But this is the end of this week's lesson. So come back and join us next time as we continue our discussion. Until then, bye-bye. Be safe. Love you.